Okay, well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, it is a beautiful uh, Sunday afternoon, and um, just kind of chilling out on my deck and had a few thoughts about today's service and some things that we talked about and jotted a couple things down. Just kind of wanted to quickly share it with you. I hope your Lord's Day afternoon is going well. And wherever you're viewing this, I hope you're doing well. Um, had the honor and privilege to spend some time in our church today dealing with courageous holiness. Or this whole idea that because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, you know, we ought to look at the commands for holiness in the scriptures through the lens of love and mercy and opportunity and duty and, uh, and a few other things. Uh, and so we talked about that today. And um, I hope the saints were blessed. We also had the privilege to dedicate some children today to the Lord. And that is always a blessing. Uh, we looked at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, started at verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Indeed, what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. And that was our kind of our focus today. It was, uh, we tried to work our way to the thought that um, we are the temple of the living God. And we try to explain that in terms of the gospel, in terms of the grace of God, but also in terms of the immense responsibility and duty that every Christian has, the privilege that every Christian has to represent the Lord well, uh, he lives in us, and how dare we ever uh, unite Christ with an harlot, right? Or, or do as, as he uh, spoke about, as Paul spoke about in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And so you've got these two, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, where he's saying some, some pretty similar things. And I think as I think about today's message, although we tried really, 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 really hard to, to frame the discussion in terms of the gospel, uh, not at all wanting any trace of legalism or perfectionism or moralism or any of the ugly isms that surround the discussion of holiness. But it's still, you know, I think, this, I think the saints, I think you all who were there and the, I think the saints received it, but you still feel that tension as a communicator uh, because Paul calls for separation here. He, he says, Wherefore, come out from among them in verse 17 and be ye separate, saith the Lord. That sounds so Old Testament, but it isn't. It's New Testament. It's for spirit-filled believers who've been, you know, baptized into the kingdom by the Son of God. And, um, you know, what do we do with that? What do we do with that in 2022? What do we do with that in the modern culture? Well, like all the other hard stuff, you know, I think you, first of all, you take it at face value. Wind is moving the camera a little bit. Uh, but I think you take it at face value. You don't try to make it fit our cultural mores or anything else. You, 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 you do the right questions. What is it? What is, who's communicating? What does it say? Why did the Holy Spirit put this in the text? How do we apply it practically? Uh, that whole idea of yoked we talked about animals that are not of the same kind trying to pull together and so i know that's a tough one but i want to encourage you to look at any area of your life wherein you as a if you're a christian you as the temple of the living god uh, you know has perhaps united yourself with something someone something uh, that is not commensurate with god's holiness and um you know, who, who wants to do work like that? Because it, it really can push you, really can challenge you. And again, we want to avoid the ditch of legalism on one side. And I didn't mention this today, perhaps I should have, but we also want to avoid the ditch of antinomianism on the other side, where, where there's no standard. Well, I did say it, but I didn't use that word. <laughs> um, consider what it means to come out from among them and be separate and how that might uh, influence your life, your entertainment, your relationships, your work, your finances. What does that mean for us today? Here's what I know it can't mean. It can't mean nothing. <laughs> it can't mean ignore it. So there, there's a meaning. And I think 
for all of us, we have to consider what and who we are joining Christ to. I also jotted down, um, I wrote down in my notes, practical bringing in, as I was thinking about the message today. What in the world does that mean? Um, we're always intimidated by those who walk in unrighteousness and the unrighteousness of the culture. Seldom do we put commensurate energy into wanting to bring people into the holy culture. Um, what do you mean by that? Okay, when was the last time you invited your neighbors over to eat with you while you pray and bow your head first and sing your family songs and expose the community that you're a part of to holy things, hymns and songs and spiritual songs and times of prayer? Uh, you know, when was the last time you saw your neighbor and said, hey man, you know what? I just been praying for you. Is there an area where we can pray for you? In other words, we need to come out from among them and be separate, but we still live in the world. And wouldn't it be cool, wouldn't it be godly, wouldn't it be honor, honoring to God to expose as many people as we can to holiness, to righteousness, to godliness? I also wrote down this, uh, this whole idea of the challenges of holiness. Uh, if we can avoid the ditches, the theological challenges, that's one thing. But then we also have to deal with the world of flesh and the devil. That's the other thing. And so, as you're digesting the message from today, the text from today, and if you're not a part of our church, but if you want to go to First, uh, 2 Corinthians 6 and read verses 14 down through 2 Corinthians 7 and verse number 1, you're welcome to do that. Uh, please do that. Um, but it's a, it can be a challenge today. You, you could, you know, no one wants to come off like the fuddy-duddy Christian. No one wants to come off like the... You know, the one that comes around and ruins all the fun. But if I might, what's more important? The world thinking you're ruining their fun or honoring or, or honoring Jesus. And you can honor Jesus with a smile and you can honor Jesus with a, you know, a polite no thank you or what have you. But he does need to be represented and he does need, does need to be honored. We are the temples of the living God. Now, having said all that... You know, we still need to walk in grace and mercy. People are at different stages of their journey. And um, so not everybody's going to get everything at the same time. I might be at a different place than my mentor or at those I'm mentoring. Uh, at the same time, the scriptures that we're reading are the exact same. So we don't want to make uh, excuses for what the, the Bible, the, what the Bible says. Uh, we want to be quick to forgive. We want to be quick to repent. Uh, we want to recognize that we still sin no matter how holy we want to be. But we also want to be courageous in 2022. Uh, it's June of 2022. The pride thing is absolutely raging and interestingly pride, right? Coming before the fall, right? It's absolutely raging. How do we train our children in this? Well, we train them. How do we educate our children in this? Well, we educate them biblically. Um, well, how do we make provision to do that? By faith. Uh, what well, should we really teach our children to be modest and holy and chaste and, and not have physical relationships to their marriage? Yes. <laughs> right. So so we don't we want to have mercy and grace, but we don't want to compromise the scriptures. And as I, I don't want to make this too long, but what else is there? Listen to this. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. What promises? Well, in our message today, we, we, we probably took maybe even more time than we were allotted to, to go back and make sure that the words that Paul used to the church at Corinth in the early chapters, those those gospel oriented passages were were explained in our church. Um, it's very difficult to get up and just say, be holy if you don't understand the promises. And we have many, many, many precious promises not the least of which is that Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again to save us from our sin. So anyway, this, these is, how can you apply these things? How can you teach your children better? What in your house just flat needs to go because it doesn't honor God? Um, what in your life needs to change? Don't be amongst the Christians that push back against biblical commands because they're not popular. Be a courageous, holy Christian. We know our holiness truly only comes from Jesus, but Jesus 
commands us to keep his commandments out of love. So we want to do that. And we want we want to do that. And we want to repent quickly when we fail. So anyway, hope this is a blessing to you. I hope things are going well with you and yours. Uh, I hope you are still excited about being the light in the midst of all of this. And I hope you also understand that a lot of our problems, if we would just follow God, they would kind of just disappear. And so let's follow God. Let's be courageously uh, holy, uh, as well as all the other things that we need to be, you know, uh, courageously loving, courageously parent our children, and all the other things, uh, courageously sharing our faith, all these other things that we've been uh, alluding to and discussing. God bless you. Have a great week.